By configuring the Raspberry Pi to use alternate functions of the GPIO, you can enable RTS and CTS hardware flow control. With RTS CTS enabled, uh, when the Raspberry Pi's UART is ready to receive data, it sets the request to send or RTS pin low. Notice that when I said uh, it's ready to receive, not to transmit, um, request to send is a, a kind of misleading, as you might uh, assume from the name, that the Pi would be signaling to the device it's connected to on the other end of the serial connection uh, an intent to send data. The request to send feature of RS-232 serial communications is pretty old at this point, and it's changed over the years, and originally it did mean, hey, I've got some data I want to send you, at which point it would wait for the connected device to signal back, all right, go ahead and send that. But as you can see, that only provides for controlling the flow of data in one direction. We could see if the connected device is ready to receive data from us, but we couldn't tell the connected device if we needed it to pause the data it was sending to us. So over the years, serial protocol changed to fit the new needs, and uh, now the current RTS-CTS scheme that we commonly use is bidirectional. So although the Raspberry Pi uh, UART isn't RS-232 in terms of voltage levels, polarities, and several other aspects, uh, it still follows many of the same principles. So request to send is really more of a request to receive now. Um, it is requesting that the connected equipment send the Pi some data. So basically uh, it says my receive buffers are ready to store some of your incoming data. If for some reason the receive buffers can't keep up with the flow of incoming data, then it sets the RTS pin to 3.3 volts. Uh, it tells the other connected device that, uh, hey, I need you to pause the data transmission. So, so in this hardware flow control scheme, uh, the RTS is our output signal indicating that we are ready, and the CTS is the input signal indicating that the remote side is ready. Or put another way, our RTS is the remote device's CTS and vice versa. Okay, so I mentioned that the RTS and CTS uh, need uh, to have an alternative alternate function of the GPIO enabled uh, before this will work. Uh, what does that mean? Well, several of the general purpose input output pins can take uh, on special hardware tasks uh, that are built into the Broadcom system on chip that powers the Raspberry Pi, uh, RTS and CTS being among these. Um, so the features are enabled by changing some values in memory. There are a number of ways uh, to go about doing this. One easy way is to use the RPI RTS CTS tool available on GitHub that was created by Matthew Hollingworth. Uh, see the video notes for a link on that. Um, another way, if you're going to be using RTS and CTS functions regularly, you may want to use a device tree overlay. Uh, again, check the notes for uh, more details on, on that. Okay, so we've got a little demo set up here. Uh, we've got a 40 pin uh, Raspberry Pi and an older 26 pin Raspberry Pi. On the 26-pin Raspberry Pis, you need to uh, add the P5 header to get at the RTS and CTS pins, which I've done here. Um, this device is generating some output that comes over the serial connection to this device, and the yellow composite video output feeds this display here, and we can see uh, we're getting output from this Raspberry Pi. The green wire is our uh, clear to send signal coming from the 26 pin Raspberry Pi to the 40 pin Raspberry Pi. So if I disconnect that wire, you'll see that nothing's actually changed here. The data is still flowing. And that's because normally when this Raspberry Pi is ready to receive data, it sets the value on the green wire uh, or on the uh, uh, request to send or request to receive, however you want to look at it, uh, it sets that to zero volts. Um, well, the sending Raspberry Pi here, the 40 pin, it's not differentiating between having that wire disconnected or, or zero volts. It's perfectly happy to keep sending data unless it sees a 3.3 volt uh, signal on that wire. So what we can do is take the uh, red wire here that I have set to the 3.3 volt output and uh, basically we're going to cheat and we're going to set the um, 
clear to send pin here to 3.3 volts and that'll be as if the 26 pin Raspberry Pi was signaling to the 40 pin Raspberry Pi um, I need you to stop the transmission of data and so actually if we look uh, we'll see that our, our output is paused as it's waiting for that data to resume and if I remove the power here and reconnect our ground signal then uh, we should see the flow of data again and yep there we go and so in a nutshell that's how we do uh, hardware flow control with RTS and CTS on the Raspberry Pi hopefully this helps you in your project good luck